We are Boom. live. And the Muay Thai guys are live and pumped to on Super Bowl day. Today's show is brought to you by Theraflu for those times when you're really fucking sick and you're about to fight, but you're also trying to cut weight. So your nutrition is in very poor order and your immune system is completely shot. You've got Theraflu. You're the fighter solution. <laughs> so I guess you're not feeling too well. Man, the past three days, I have never woken up. I, I sneezed, right? I've never felt a sneeze that felt like skin out of my lungs just ripped out into my throat. <laughs> I, I might have tasted like what the flesh of my lungs tastes like if I swallowed it back up or I spit it out. <laughs> it's been rather nasty, man. Yeah, I... <laughs> I, everyone, we've been talking about this. Everyone's being kind of weird. Maybe it's because of the weather going from like 50 degrees to negative two to 50 and people getting sick. The flu season's going around. I feel like there's a lot of stuff happening in the country and there's just a lot of stress and, it, and people's, I think, immune systems are just down. And I got caught in this whole volatile part, part of this year, I guess. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of time before it gets around to everybody. But it's kind of like a energy that's just around, you know, and that energy kind of affects your your physicality as well as well as your mentality and all that kind of stuff. And it's a it's a weird type of energy. We were talking about this. I'm not sure if we talked about this on the last podcast. I think we did, but just like the whole way that uh, just being here during the winter times and it's just a little strange, but. I mean, we, you we know, usually... it's, people can read it because everyone I've been talking to and saying the same thing, they're like, they're all agreeing. They're like, yeah, I've been feeling off. Everyone around me has been acting really weird. I, I don't know what it is about this time of year, but it's it's not just me and you because we had this conversation. But like a lot of the people that kind of normally always have their shit together that I brought it up to, they they're all saying the same exact thing. Good. So we're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> we're not alone yeah speaking of that i uh i made a post recently and it was of me boxing because i have the pro boxing debut coming up this saturday mm -hmm. and i pretty much said like man there's been so many times that i've been wanting to just just fucking stop this shit like asking myself is it worth it is this something that i need to keep pursuing and just keep ending up like in the same position at the end even though it's like you make those big leaps and bounds and then you just like comes back down and i think a lot of people are going through that because after i made that post i had a lot of messages and people with emails uh reaching out to me and dms on instagram uh talking about how they're going through the same thing and like thank you for putting this out they're like you know like i'm not even close to being as far of a level as you and i'm thinking about you know like i'm always thinking twice about this and seeing that you're at that level and thinking the same thing. It's like, damn, maybe if I keep going instead of quitting right now, maybe I can at least have an opportunity to fight on a big show once in my life. So uh, it was really uh, inspiring to, to read that, that, uh, you know, I can actually set an example by keeping going. And I think the lion fight uh, card last night, seeing who I've competed against in the past and what's happening right now, uh, it definitely inspired me for uh, what I'm capable of and, and my future potential. Well, I think a lot of it comes down to having some type of, uh, well, not some type. You need a vision. You need like a vision for what your future is going to be like, what you want to accomplish. And if you don't have that, then it's really hard to uh, get motivated when you're feeling like shit because you don't have that thing that is getting you up out of bed to push you farther and farther and it's really easy to lose track of that and we've had a couple podcasts where we focus on like the why and knowing why you're doing why you're waking up early to put in the extra hours why yeah. you're fighting why you're doing all this kind of stuff because a lot of people just do it for uh, extrinsic motivation which is i mean it's valuable in its own sense but you really have to find the the true value behind why you're fighting why you're training why you're pursuing whatever goals or dreams you have and you really have to have this overlofting vision and if you don't have it you're just going through the motions you kind of turn into a robot like most of the people in 
in the just society nowadays. So yeah, if there was one little piece of advice that keeps me motivated, I mean, I have my off day too. We, like we said, everyone's kind of yeah. going through it right now. Um, it, it's always good to just take some time to refresh your mind and refresh your vision of like where you're trying to end up. And when I do that, when I like really like sit down and focus on like, you know, in five years, I want to be here X, Y, and Z. I want to be doing this. I want to feel like this. I want to be surrounded by these type of people. It kind of gives me that sense of urgency a little bit. And it also adds that motivation factor to it. So yeah, man, what, what, what's, what's keeping you going through all this uh, shit? Uh, you know, like now it was more of, I just know in the past that whenever I felt like that, but I just kept, you know, kept showing up to training regardless and kept putting in the work and then the results, you know, just came from the work itself, like without really any emotional attachment, I don't feel any emotional attachment, especially to this fight. Uh, I'd be rather more excited for a Muay Thai fight, uh, and and I'm just waiting for this injury to mend itself back. And there's a lot of exciting matchups that might be on the horizon. Uh, literally, I'm, I've am i gotten three names that I would consider legendary fighters of our time for me to be able to, to compete against. So guys I used to look up to, guys I used to study, guys I used to watch on TV, and for me to have the opportunity f- to fight them. So, I mean, that that, that whole thing is obviously exciting on its own but more recently i just haven't had any emotional attachment to it but i just look back to the times where the same uh happened in the past and just learning from history where i just kept going kept going and eventually i found my way uh you know like we don't always need uh affirmation like you know it's going to be great it's going to be great because you know a lot of times it's not but if we just keep going through all those obstacles and feeling shitty, eventually we hopefully come out on top. If we're putting in the correct work, obviously like not self-sabotaging or anything like that. So uh, watching lion fight last night, I kind of had a realization, like a, a truthful, realistic look at what I'm doing because I've been really, really hard on myself uh, about the past like couple fights and seeing the guys that I've competed against and how they're just completely murking the competition and how it was not the same case with me. Uh, I look back to the point that I fought these guys being a professional of six months, seven months, eight months. I've been professional for six, seven, eight months when I fought these guys at the top of the ladder and they're fighting guys that are pros for 12 years with 30 plus fights with 10 professional fights and all of this experience. So then I think about it, man, if I just keep putting in the work, if I was able to accomplish that and have that kind of a fight and that kind of a performance win against guys of that level within seven, eight months of being a professional, what if I just kept that work going for six years, let's say five, six years? Like, I think it's inevitable for success to come. So it was really, really inspirational for me to watch Lion Fight last night. Yeah, I think a lot of it comes down to just really embracing the grind, man. And I think you've really taken it to heart about just the gradual evolution of yourself and making sure that you're evolving, whether it's slow or fast, you're evolving at some type of rate and moving forward and growing as a person. And I think that's really key because a lot of people will get complacent, um, will lose track of why they're doing what they're doing, lose track of wanting to be great because of the fear of failure or the fear fear of success or just the fear of having to actually put in the work and make the sacrifices necessary to actually do it. And so I think once you get to a certain level, like mainly, mainly the pros, but there's, there's next level pros too. It's the, it's the guys who really just dedicate themselves to the art, to growth, and put more than just – they don't just show up to training and, and put in the training. They, they, they're they training on the outside as well in, in regards to – they're planning out what they need to be working on that's going to make them an elite-level fighter. They're not just going in and trying to figure it out every single training session. I mean, you have guys like Eddie Abasolo who 
he, he's just much more flow, not really planned. And uh, that works for him. But what I've come to realize, at least what works for me, is that I need to have like a structured plan. I need to know what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, because then I'm able to put that much more focus and energy into it because I know that's going to get me the results that I need. And I, I think having some type of system where you're able to create this type of like self-evaluation, which I think uh, I've thought about doing that, like making a like a PDF download or some shit where you can like do a self-evaluation of yourself, like in your clinch game and your knees, your elbows, your sweeps, your positioning, hand, so on and so forth. You can go fucking so deep into that shit, man, and, and really fine tune what or really figure out what you need to work on and then diagnose it and then figure out how to improve that. Yeah. And I think, I think you've been able to do that, especially with boxing, with going to knob noise and then going to CSA, you've tried to uh, take bits and pieces out of about everything. And that's really what it comes down to. You have to learn from the best and take what works best from you and then adapt accordingly. Yeah, exactly. Um, one of the biggest things is, and it's almost like I'm, starting to really really figure out patterns and you can only do that once you have been in the game long enough i feel like that's where experience kind of comes in i can like i said before i can look back in my history and be okay with a lot of negative energy or myself feeling in a plateau let's say because i've been there in the past so i can look at history and just see like okay this is you know a signal for what i need to do next just like you know, uh, an accountant or somebody that is studying the stock stock market, they they realize the patterns like when something's about to fall or something's about to go up. Uh, I think I'm starting to find that pattern recognition. I started to watch watching the fights last night. I kind of I thought Elijah was going to beat Brett. So let's go over the we'll, we'll go into the fights. And I honestly thought Elijah was going to beat Brett. Elijah's eight and one. His only loss was to Brett. So I thought he would be hungry to come back. It's been a number of years. Um, I think that Elijah fought him early on in his career. So he's gotten a lot better. And then Brett was in his prime at the time. And, you know, I think the tides have shifted over time now and that he would be able to beat him. But I said it when Elijah was fighting. Uh, he had a debut pro fighter go against him uh, at the Lion fight you know, uh, at the end of 2017, they brought in a debut fighter from a weight class below, much smaller, and he was kind of giving him work in the clinch, even though it was a decisive win. Uh, I saw the holes in his clinch game. And I said, that's not something you can fix in a short amount of time. Like that is something that you do need to be in Thailand for like an hour every single day to fix th those types of holes. And uh, then we watched the fight last night and Brett picked him apart in the clinch. Uh, it, it was very small details that you can see, but just the way uh, Elijah's posture was, a lot of different things that take a lot of time to implement. Um, yeah, Brett completely picked apart in the clinch. He timed him really well. Uh, there was not enough authority and pop on Elijah's uh, striking. He pushed forward, but just didn't land anything uh, very like accurate and solid that really moved Brett. So uh, Brett was able to cut him. He was he rocked him in the clinch as well. He uh, he bent him over, and I mean that's a six foot five fighter. So uh, yeah, again, it gave me a lot of uh, positive feedback because how I beat Brett was in the clinch. So when Brett picked apart Elijah in the clinch, that just made me want to dive back into what I I was doing by traveling to Thailand and just diving really really deep into it and seeing that. Uh, it's something that's supernatural to me, and I feel like I can just build more and more upon it. Yeah, man. I think a lot of people neglect the clinch. I mean, obviously, because we're, we're always uh, talking about how the ties are just so much more dominant because, at least especially in the clinch, because they train it every day. And if you train it every day, you're going to get good at it. Here in the States, you'll be lucky if you train it a couple times a week. And you have the right training partners to do it. And you have the right instruction to make sure you're doing it properly and, and learning those small details that are going to make a, a, a huge difference in whether or not you'll land a knee or 
have superior position to dump your opponent and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I, I, I didn't really know whether or not Elijah or Brett were going to win. I thought it was a pretty even matchup, but I did know Brett had a lot more experience underneath his belt. And I think that his loss to you, if anything, probably motivated him to uh, rev it up a little bit. So this way he, he doesn't want to let another up, quote unquote, up and comer uh, beat him. And he doesn't want to be the gatekeeper, you know, for for someone else. And plus it was a, it was a title fight, which is uh, a whole nother story. But yeah, yeah, it's a deserved I, title, especially uh, at this point of his career to hold a major promotion title. Uh, so now he's the North American Lion Fight champion. I think it's rather well deserved after that long of a stand run being professional for probably close uh, past a decade now yeah yeah for real yeah brett's uh brett's a beast and uh yeah he's he's actually going to be hosting a another one of his own camps out in thailand too so uh best of luck to him as well but what 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 else on the card uh stuck out to you because i i didn't get to watch it like i said um, definitely the main events, the the three title fights definitely stuck out. There was also a fight uh, I explained to you. This kid, uh, Chris Mims, he got signed with Lion Fight. He uh, fought Brian Bogue, did a spinning elbow, and uh, it was kind of a blind spinning elbow that he landed on Brian Bogue. Brian was kind of stuck and uh, just a little stiff on his pro debut. Uh, definitely a lot more technical, but uh, just got a little stuck on a technique and then got spinning elbowed. Uh, so Chris Mims, uh, he fell while he knocked him out, but then he fought PJ Suida from uh, Rami's camp. And uh, PJ is a rather technical guy. So it was more of, uh, you know, like a lot of wildness spinning stuff against a technical fighter. Uh, PJ was getting the uh, really tearing up his leg, but then he was getting caught with some of the wild things, you know, like it's hard to time guys when punches and spinning stuff is coming from weird angles and they throw it back and forth. Um, but PJ started to kind of find his timing and then right at the end of the fifth round, they were both rather tired and uh, PJ flying Needham in the face and landed the knockout shot. Yeah. So that was a, interesting fight as well um i think chris just needs a little more time uh building his foundation his fundamentals i think his he's exciting he has fun in there and and i think he's a good kid but his uh, fundamentals need a little bit of work i think pj is on his way up now uh so hopefully uh, we'll see more success from him as well and um the other fights that definitely stuck out were the lurzilla fight he fought Alexi. So it looked like they brought in two guys from uh, New Zealand. So it was him uh, for the title against Lozilla, Alexi. And then there was uh, another fighter that went against Chip. So uh, Lozilla was actually the co-main event. Chip was the main event for this for this yeah. uh, card. Very fancy. And uh, Lozilla did Lozilla stuff. He did Mayweather of Muay Thai kind of work. Uh Ducking under, I mean, ducking under kicks, like squatting under them, leaning back to his head almost touching the floor. Uh, he matadored him at some point where the, this kid was tough. He he actually landed a few shots on Lerzilla, but uh, Lerzilla was having the time of his life, really. Um, and he matadored him where he did like a angle step over and, you know, used his hand up in the air to kind of push and he the guy just keeping up with the footwork fell. And at that point, you know, those memes at this point, he realized he really fucked up. (laughs) It was like that. meme. it's like, at that point I realized like, man, there's just another level to this entire game. A lot of people were mentioning the fact that Lerzilla is from the famous jockey gym. And I got to train with Chowlet jockey gym where, you know, Sanchai came from where Lerzilla came from. And, What's really interesting about them is that they would never spar hard, but uh, I heard that they didn't really do pad work or anything there. Like they didn't really do back work and pad work. They had a lot of matting and then they would just spar for like hours at a time, just getting tricky and having fun with each other. So when I worked with Chowlet, yeah, he had like really fun stuff to show me. Like as uh, as he leans back, he would like kick me in my asshole. Like, like he would shove his toes 
like right in the crease of my ass while he's like leaning back for my kick. He's like, yeah, me and my friend back in Jokey Gym, me Senchai have fun. I like, I like, and I'm like, you like putting your fingers, your toes into people's ass. He's like, like, yeah, I have fun. You know, he's like, we train long time and then just come up with stuff like that. So yeah, they, it's a gym that just came from creativity. So I think that's why you see these really exciting fighters like Lerzilla, Sanchai, and then when, when Chowla was fighting. And what about uh, Chip's fight? This guy was ginormous. He looked like light heavyweight that cut to light heavyweight. The he guy was, Chip was fighting? Yeah, he was like as tall as me, but just completely differently built. Like those, he looked like... He was from New Zealand, obviously, but he looked like he came, you know, those giant men from like Sweden. He just built like a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was huge. And uh, yeah, you know, another fighter that's like a European kickboxer looking and throwing hard technique, but no actual like tactic to it. Um, Chip destroyed his leg. Uh used his jab once again like a maniac with his 80 something inch reach on a small frame <laughs> um his speed was again too much so his opponent threw a lot but yeah didn't have much of a clinch game uh chip actually spinning elbowed him in the fifth i think it was five rounds i think one of the scores was like 50 44 like the spread was insane mm -hmm. he just picked him apart all five rounds and uh spinning elbow knocked him down in the fifth and even with 10 seconds left, he had all the gas in the world still and tapped his head like, let's fucking go and started swinging for the fences with 10 seconds left against this bigger yeah, opponent. So, appreciate that. yeah, no joke. <laughs> no, no joke. Yeah. So it was exciting for me to watch, um, you know, them, them fight against these veterans. I feel like I have a nice connection to them now and. It's good to see uh, the guys I shared their ring with uh, succeeding, doing well. And, uh, yeah, man, I can't wait to get back in there myself. So how's the the boxing training going, and how's the knee? The knee is doing well. Uh, I feel like I got to, like, a plateau. Like, it got really, really good really fast. I was doing a lot of strength and conditioning work for it, a lot of work. And uh, now it's at a point where it's, like, it got to a certain point, and it's uh, – there's just like a little discomfort in it and it's doing well, but it's just like a lingering that that same point, you know, that I recovered to is kind of lingering around. So, uh, I don't know, maybe I just got to go back to my physical therapist and get a new prescription or something. And, uh, we'll go from there. But the boxing, I feel like, uh, it, it's really helped me with my footwork. I, I started and, and, and the step away from Muay Thai being able to watch from third person, I've been coaching a lot. Uh, for Muay Thai and but really focused on boxing taking that third person view it's really nice to to go back in and I did a day of sparring and working with my guys I did Muay Thai for the first time since my fight at Glory so two months since I sparred Muay Thai and I felt sharper than ever uh, I feel like my head kick has really really improved um I'm usually super tight from Muay Thai, like getting my legs fucked up, my hips need because I'm tall. So people knee me in the hips all the time. And I've had the time to focus on flexibility and obviously strengthening my knees and doing the physical therapy and rehab. Uh, I think it's opened up my hips a little bit. One day I'll get to single pigeon. <laughs> 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 Open up my hips a bit and... Uh, uh, a lot of the fakes and, and being able to study a lot. So, yeah, speaking of that, um, I finished the a project for an equination for you guys. And uh, it's on scoring with Pechtenong, uh Ben Chamek. It's a really, really good lesson on scoring because watching the live feed at Lion Fight and seeing what people are saying, it made me just, if you guys can't see me right now, I'm just palming my face really hard with a with a palm stuck into my nose um <laughs> the the way that people were commenting and the, the, like oh chip's about to get it now is like this round is you know he's gonna get knocked out when it's obvious that 
the other guy's just getting picked apart, but he's like walking forward, getting punched in the face and they're like really pushing the pace. And I'm like, someone said it and I just couldn't help myself. I'm like, I'm like the direction in which you walk doesn't win fights. <laughs> like, if it did, it would be a lot easier to fight. <laughs> yeah, man. The, the direction in which you walk is like, he's like, he's walking forward though. All right. But he, he, he just wins. got knocked down with a spinning <laughs> elbow. Walk, he, yeah. He's walking forward into elbows and jabs. Um, so this is a really important lesson. I think a lot of people need to watch. I also included a link in there to Sylvie's little breakdown. Uh, well, it's more of her commentary, uh, written commentary on the Joanna and Jacek fight when she fought on, uh, what is it called? Multi the angels show in, uh, in Thailand, which is the biggest female promotion. And it was a very controversial decision to white people to Westerners, <laughs> to Falag, but to anyone that was there and to the ties, it, it wasn't. So uh, it, I think it's a really good lesson to learn from. And then we dive much deeper into it as me and Pechtenong spar. So you, and, and I break down a number of techniques. So you get a lot of tricky techniques and you get kind of a technical breakdown, tactical breakdown of how to win a fight. So like what you should be looking for in Muay Thai to actually win a fight i think this is one of the most important things is the sport evolves and from what i see is that the olympics and ifmo working with them they're going to be following this same suit they're going to be trying to go with the real tie rules and scoring yeah i mean i think it's really important for people to learn how scoring works because especially if you're competing and shit then it's like almost a necessity, but if you want to be an educated spectator too, just knowing uh, what's actually happening and what the judges are looking for. I mean, I, I honestly haven't been able to look at the video yet. Been super busy, but I have a plan on Tuesday, this upcoming Tuesday, to to watch it, upload it, do all that kind of shit, and I'm looking forward to see just uh, what I don't know because I, I figure I'm gonna not know a lot, and uh, Bantam is gonna just blow my mind so yeah i can't wait for it man <laughs> yeah and and he talks about it at the end kind of how you ju you also have to go uh place by place uh you know certain places are are obviously still going to score different things so you want to have it's like learning the foundation like this is what it's supposed to be scored like but you also have to keep in mind what state you're in where you are and what kind of promotion what they're really looking for um when it came to lion fight, I think I think they're kind of in the middle. Like they're like kind of there, but not quite. When it comes to when it comes to the scoring, uh, I think the obvious rounds that they score well, the obvious rounds, but the close rounds, uh, I think they have a hard time figuring out which which techniques and like what sets apart a close round. So I think we're getting there. Uh, I have a positive mindset that uh, we'll get there. So, yeah, definitely check out uh, neckmoynation.com to get all that content. I have that coming out. And next is going to be a clinch breakdown because I had a clinching session with Patch Tanong as well. So I'll be breaking that down as well with a number of techniques. So there's a lot of exciting stuff happening on uh, Neckmoy Nation. Do you have any other projects yourself? Um. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be finishing up the Fighter's Body, which is a uh, body weight strength and conditioning program that I co-collaborated with my strength and conditioning coach who helped me create the program and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just finishing up uh, some finer details to make sure that it covers everything it can. And I'm really looking forward to that because a lot of uh, a lot of just workouts you see online um, are just put together to make you tired. You know what I mean? Yeah, and for sure. These are not necessarily going to make you tired, but they're going to make you fucking strong and controlled and balanced, which I feel like is so much more important because yeah. especially if you're training uh, as a fighter too, you don't want to be tired from your strength and conditioning because you want to be able to have energy for your Muay Thai or technique training specifically. So I'm really excited about this because it's a good blend between uh, strength, conditioning, uh, control, balance, uh, technique focus as well. And so th there's a lot to it that it's taken me a lot longer to uh, put together than I initially expected. This has been like a year and a half, two year project, but I pro procrastinated a lot. Uh, but I'm looking forward to actually finishing it up and, and getting some feedback from everyone to, to see what it's all about. And uh, if it doesn't really it over well, to the Muay Thai athlete. Oh, yeah, you know it, man. And uh, if this does well, and uh, I'm 
well, whether or not this does well, I'm going to create a another follow up program with this. It's going to be a focus on weightlifting and stuff too, because right now this is just body weight, and you can literally do this anytime, anywhere. And so there's really no excuse. But for people who want to be able to hit the gym with focus and intensity and have like a structured program, I'll be coming up with that uh, later in the year as well. But this is a great place to start. And other than that, nah, man, uh, I had to push my flight back for Thailand. For those of you who don't know, because my uh, just paperwork with my dog is a pain in the fucking ass. And you have to have like certain things done at certain times prior to your flight and all this kind of shit. And we thought we did. We checked with the vet, but they missed one booster shot. So we had to wait X amount of days before she can enter the country. So, yeah, so that's been a little stressful. And then sell my car. Man, it all out, man it once, I, I feel like once you're on the plane, you're going to take a deep breath like, <sighs> all right it's no, not man. Man. once once we get past customs and everything then i'll yeah. take a deep breath and shit <laughs> until then you'll know what the fuck's gonna happen and shit but i'm making sure i'm uh crossing my t's dotting my eyes and all that kind of stuff and hopefully it'll all it'll all work out man but i can't fucking wait man i can't wait to get uh to thailand and uh, we were talking about doing a thailand training camp in july and august and we're going to be doing that which is going to be fucking sweet we're putting together the final details of that so if you're not coming to any of the uh, other upcoming events that we have um july and august is a good time to do it so thailandtrainingcamp.com boom hell yeah that's a lot of people that have time off from from work from school uh, like whether you're a teacher i actually might be bringing in uh my coach's wife Oh, yeah. a, couple, nice. a couple, yeah, a couple of the students, a lot of people. Yeah, you're getting your tax returns. Put that stuff in your savings and put it towards July and August because that's what everyone in my gym is doing. I'm because yeah. Will, uh, my our little MMA superstar, uh, he he said he's getting a big tax return, so he's like, Man, that's going straight to that trip. So, oh, yeah, yeah I, I would suggest you do the same, man. T- take all that work that you've had, that extra bonus that you're not always expecting and makes make a huge investment into it. Uh, looking at the rates, I looked at the rates again and there was like two week rates for like $600 or $700 for the training. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we're making money. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how you get a, It's a beachfront bungalow. We're going to be on the, uh, you're going to be training with us. It's a beachfront bungalow and uh training at the camp with just legendary trainers as well so it's gonna be i mean that value i i still we got to talk again <laughs> <laughs> give it too much value bro <laughs> yeah i still don't understand the profit margin right there but yeah i'm super excited to do it looking forward to going back to thailand i think uh i'm gonna try to merge that into some uh again very extreme changes in my life after seeing this show and just thinking about all everything I've been complaining about and how it's only been really a year. <laughs> like, I, I guess I just don't have a sense of time where my expectations have just been so high for myself that I didn't realize how little time has passed. So That's good. yeah, yeah, it'll be some big changes. So hopefully uh, you guys are on that journey with us as well. Looking forward to it, man. So uh, in the coming weeks, uh, try to get Onion Topic on here. Uh, we'll try to get a number of guests. Uh, hopefully with Sean traveling, we can get all those things together as well. But man, just thank you guys for all of your support. Uh, we've had some amazing uh, reviews, some amazing emails, messages sent to us. So as always, keeping it going and growing. Kind of a quick impromptu uh podcast before the super bowl everyone is going to get crazy in a few hours my house is probably gonna fill up in a couple hours yeah, so i forgot the super bowl was even fucking happening until like friday <laughs> They're like oh you have much bigger that? things you have much bigger things I'm to like, who, i don't even know who's playing i didn't know who's playing till last friday i figured the patriots were playing but fuck it's funny how I used to care so much about that, and now I don't even know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fake fan. I guess I'm a Philly fan. I'm an Eagles fan. I've always been a fan of uh, their playing style. They're they're like tri- very tricky. Again, they're like a real extreme team. Like they either just kill people or they just fall off halfway through. Or yeah, they're exciting to watch. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a fake fan though because it's been like six years since I watched, and now that they're in the Super Bowl, I'm like, woo! oh yeah, Philly, yeah, woo. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hell yeah. All It'll right. Well, exciting. good, good catching up. Uh, yeah, just a quick little podcast here. We'll be back sometime soon. And until next time, we're Boys out. Boys guys, we're out. Peace.